Hey everyone, Motorola has long been known for making great budget phones, and now they're back in the game with the Moto G7 and the G7 Plus. These two phones look super similar to each other, and they have pretty similar specs, but there are some key differences that makes the Plus worth more. I'm Angie for GSM Marina, and these are the key features of the Moto G7 Plus and the Moto G7. Let's start with the parallels before we get to the differences. First, the boxes themselves are really similar. You'll find a cable, wall adapter, and see-through case in each. The G7 Brethren have rounded aluminum backs with a mirror finish that's very pretty if you ignore the markings on the lower half of the phones, and the microphone dots that are infuriatingly not centered. They're both a little slippery and absolute fingerprint magnets, so you also might want to use the cases that they come with. The power buttons are a little less clicky than we'd like, but the volume buttons feel pretty satisfying. Design-wise, the biggest differences are a slightly more raised camera bump on the G7 and the color options. The indigo and black versions that we have are pretty subtle and it's rather easy to mistake one for the other. The G7 siblings are splash resistant and sport Gorilla Glass 3 on the front, so while the phones are well constructed, you can't full on abuse the poor things. They have Full HD screens with a tall 19 by 9 aspect ratio and a good pixel density. Both phones sport not-so-small water droplet notches. There are no options to hide them, so you'll have a small cutout on your screen if you full screen your videos. Both phones have 3000 mAh batteries, but we still need to run a few tests to see which of the two has a better battery life. Long live the jack, at least on these phones. With either device, you'll get up to 64GB of onboard storage and an expandable card slot. The G7 phones have a nearly stock version of Android Pie, and you'll find zero bloatware on here. There's a moto menu that offers a few shortcuts, and the pill navigation is slightly more customized, but otherwise everything is pure Google. However, before you get too excited, you should know that they aren't part of the Android One program, so they'll probably only be updated to Android Q. Like I said, these phones are super similar, but this is where the similarities end. Both phones have USB-C ports, but only the Plus supports 27 watt fast charging and quick charge 4. The G7, on the other hand, only allows up to 15 watt charging. The G7 Plus has stereo speakers, while well, you have to make do with the single bottom firing one on the G7. Unsurprisingly, the G7 Plus has a slightly faster Snapdragon 636 chipset compared to the Snapdragon 632 of the G7 but it remains to be seen just how much faster it really is. In terms of the cameras, the Plus definitely has a leg up over the regular G7. While both phones have 5 megapixel depth sensors, the Plus has a 16 megapixel main camera with a wider f1.7 aperture, while the G7 has a 12 megapixel main camera with an f1.8 aperture. On the selfie side of things, the Plus once again has a better camera setup, with a 12 megapixel shooter in comparison to the G7's 8 megapixel one. It also supports 4K video capture, while the G7 only allows up to Full HD. The Moto G7 siblings are looking like a really good pair of mid-rangers. The G7 Plus is sold for around 50 bucks more than the G7, but it'll take some more testing to see whether the specs that are different really matter so much when you're using the phones. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below, and we'll try to get to them in the full review. Subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss it, and I'll see you next time.